What is happening and welcome to another four wheel drive talk episode and friends today I'm going to share with you uh, first impressions. Well, I don't know. Can I get away with first? Well, you be the judge of this. I don't think it's really technically first impressions because it's not. And this would be, uh, and let me put it this way. Over the course of the last couple months, I've had the opportunity to play around with a Sunnyside off-road boonie stomper uh, teardrop trail. You may recall, I think it was a couple months ago, we released our first one. So, uh, so I think that one's more of the first impression. So this is a, I'm gonna say this is a hands-on review because I've been able to spend quite a bit of time in this thing, and as I'll share with you a story uh, here, uh, one of the last times I took this thing out down at Anza Brega, this was a very interesting uh, little overnight camping adventure. It was a, actually a lot of fun, but there's uh, some humor in there. But anyway, so as many of you are just getting involved in overlanding or maybe looking to transition out of a ground tent into a trailer, because as I'll be bringing up here uh, probably next couple of weeks, we're gonna have a video coming out on talking about the pros and cons to towing a trailer versus not towing a trailer. And my opinion, I think there's a lot, the pros outweigh the cons with that. But anyway, there's a lot of per, there's a lot of perks in having a towable behind you. Now, obviously there's a lot of different types of trailers out there. You have like an expedition style trailer, like my turtleback, which I tow. Then you have something with hard walls. Now, let me clarify, with the turtleback, I'm climbing up to the top of this thing where I have a rooftop tent. Now with a teardrop like the one that we're gonna be talking about here today, the Boonie Stomper by Sunnyside Off-Road, this is, you climb inside this thing, you have hard walls going all the way around you. And with this teardrop, this thing is unlike any other teardrop that I've been able to play around with for reasons I'll bring up here in a moment. But anyways, the purpose behind this here is many of you guys are on the fence. So the purpose behind these videos is to help you educate or get educated rather, and determine whether or not something like this is something that aligns with your goals, with your overlanding or camping experience. Now, of course, if you find some value with this video, friends, you'd be doing us a huge favor, like, like pretty darn close to like this. I mean, look at that, it's almost out of camera frame there. That's how big of a favor that is. <laughs> if you can crush that like button, if you find some value with this video. That said, my friends, uh, hey, it said, it's time. Come on, pull the seat in. Let's go. All right, friends, so starting off this review, I'm gonna go through some of the things, some of the basic specs of this thing. Then I'm gonna close this thing off, this video off rather, with my first impressions. Actually, I'll share with you one of the most recent uh, little camping adventures uh, that my son and I went uh, were able to experience when we went down to Anza Brega. And this is where, of course, I'll share with you where you can actually, if you're on the fence about one of these things, I'm going to let you know where you can go and rent one of these things pretty inexpensively and go explore the great outdoors and have some fun and determine whether something like this is suitable for you. But anyway, so we're gonna start things off with some of the extra specs of this thing. And this leads into, a moment ago, I spoke about, there are some really unique features about the Boonie Stomper uh, teardrop trailer. And one of them is, is its sheer size. This thing is 119 inches long and it's 74 inches wide at its widest point. Now this is where, this little guy really shines. This thing only weighs 670-ish pounds, and the tongue weight, get this, is about 100 pounds. Now, to make this possible, you have a two by two steel tubing uh, powder coated frame. So that's great for uh, supreme dur durability, durability, boy, if I could get that out, while also being ultra lightweight. Now, the aluminum skin, again, is something that is used that when you look at the continuity with the material that these guys use on this thing, you could appreciate why this thing only weighs what it does. So this thing, the whole outside of this thing is aluminum skin. Again, for outstanding durability. See, I got it right that time without adding much weight. Now you have a two inch receiver hitch. And the cool part about this, this allows you to add like a, a hitch rack, a hitch table, a spare tire, and actually the options keep going on and on. Now on the back of this thing, you'll notice at where it curves up, you have this 50 watt solar panel, which powers the driver and passenger porch lights, a dimmer 
dimmable interior LED light, uh, dual USB charging points, and a powered fan. And that powered fan in this thing, I'll give these guys credit. This thing is a beast. Now, one of the things I'll, I'll talk about here in a moment here are the doors. And so the doors have these windows in it. And long story short, you crank on the fan in this thing, and it pulls in so much air. So one of the first impressions, speaking of the first impressions, uh, it was a lot warmer at that point than when my, my son Caleb and I just recently took this thing out down in uh, Enzbrega there. And so it was 85 degrees. I turned on that fan and there was so much airflow that was coming into this thing that it was very comfortable inside there. But yeah, anyways, this fan is a beast. Now let's shift gears and talk about more of the off-road specs of this thing. Because many of you guys, that's what you're really getting into. You're, you want something that you can actually, you may have a, a souped up Jeep, Toyota, or whatever it may be. At 600 pounds, you can have a souped up pretty much whatever you want. And pretty much anything's going to tow this thing. But you want to be able to make sure that a trailer has the chops to be able to be off grid and this thing for its size and weight doesn't cut it doesn't disappoint so you have a custom fabricated long travel independent uh trailing arm suspension with load adjusting shots you have method 409 wheels which i have to say these things look pretty stinking cool on this thing and it's funny because the tires on this thing are just flat out they look militaryish. it's kind of like the big beefy well they're not big but the, the lugs on it are, are quite are quite impressive and they're 29 inch uh, tensor or regulator tires. So again, from an exterior standpoint, I think we, the wheels and tires really, and then the ride height of this thing really does it well. Now let's circle back around, not really circling back around, let's circle inside and talk about uh, some of the interior specs that I was able to observe. So you have six foot four interior length and it's 46 inches wide. Now there's three quarter inch cabinet grade pine walls, which allows you to customize the trailer with accessories. So there's no wiring or voids in the walls, which makes customizing this thing pretty darn easy. You don't have to go wondering whether or not you're gonna drill through a wall and hit some wires or some hoses or this or that. It's all solid, so that works out really nice. Now the interior is finished with carpet walls and headboard, plus the linoleum floor for easy cleaning, which is if you have kids or pets is a big plus. And the cool part about this is right in the back of this thing, you have these uh, large storage cabinets that go from side to side, which again, from when you look at your largest commodity when overlanding or off-roading or overlanding, you know, we're talking about overlanding right now, it is, uh, it is the storage side of things. So anyways, you have a ton of storage on the back of this thing and it works out really nice when you look at the limited amount of space that you have with a small trailer like this. They did a great job on the storage side of it. Speaking of storage, let's jump into some of the options that you can get for this thing because as you're going to find out, one of the options that you have is adding more storage or things that can complement the storage uh, capability of this thing. And Sunnyside Off-Road offers many different options for customizing a boonie stopper. Okay, let's start off up on the top. So you can add a custom boonie roof rack for securing extra uh, gear. Actually, speaking of which, you could add a tongue box on the front of the sink for even more storage. Now, you have your choice of a Jackery Portable uh, Power Station 240 or a 500. Now, you can add an external AC uh, power port on the trailer as well. And you have a custom fold-down uh, side table, which is great for preparing meals. And so this is on the passenger side, right behind the door. So you have this table actually not only for preparing meals but you can actually put like a partner stove or something like that it's a perfect it's a perfect size for that now you have your choice of a cbt awning now you have uh, multiple choices and sizes from a 55 79 or a 99 inch size you can also pick up a spare tire with a matching wheel so basically you can add the rear tire mount with the actual install itself and then let's talk about water so if you want uh, to carry around water with you you can actually uh, pick it up with an 18.5 liter uh, lifesaver uh, jerry can with a water purifier as well. And one of the more interesting items with this here, which I'll spend a little bit more time here talking about momentarily, is you have this custom fit a six inch dual density foam mattress with a poly cotton cover as well. Uh, and then going kind of closing off on the storage side of it you can actually pick up interior cargo nets and this is great for holding you know smaller items like your cell phones and so forth and so anyway as you can see 
the features that it comes with and also some of the options that you can pick up with this thing as well for a small trailer at the price point which again i'm going to be talking about some of the pros that i thought with this thing and that's where the price is going to come in you this thing actually really punches out of its weight class but anyways let me share with you the last time that we went down there and and took this thing out you can actually go down there and rent these very affordably and it's kind of like Many of you know, my, my other company is a photography company. I love photography. And anytime that I'm thinking about a serious new lens or a camera that I might be picking up, most of the time I'm gonna rent it first, just get a hands-on with it and see whether or not it's the right thing for me. Well, the cool part about that is with the with this uh, Boonie Stomper, there's a place down in San Diego, or it's actually in Zabrega, which is even cooler because it's kind of like, another planet out there. It's really cool. So they have these, uh, this company called Ride and Share, or Ride and Drive rather, uh, have some of these boonie stoppers on there that you can rent and take out and enjoy. So uh, this was a few weeks back. My son and I uh, left Orange County about 3 p.m., uh, decided to stop at uh, uh, Taco Bell not a good idea in traffic. Um, and so we had to make a, a couple pit stops. And uh, by the time we got down to the 78, no, it was a 76. Man, the traffic was horrible. And so we didn't get there on location until after dark, which was kind of a, a buzzkill. But uh, that place is so stinking beautiful. So anyway, you go there, you meet, you go to the, the ride and drive, uh, you fill out all the paperwork, uh, and you hook it up to your vehicle, and you drive out into the abyss, wherever you want to go with this thing. Now, in Zabrega, I will say this. If you've not been out there, this place is so darn cool. There's a lot of really fun camping locations out there. So, anyway, you know, I've said this. I, I've towed a lot of trailers before, and one of the things I've, you know, sometimes I will notice, like, hey, wow, you hardly even notice that the thing is back there. This thing redefines that term. You really don't notice that this trailer is behind you, other than the occasional you might see a you know, see it in your rear view mirror, but from a weight standpoint, man, that 600, 670 pounds or whatever it is there, that really, boy, you don't notice it. So we get out the location. Now, at this point, it's dark. It's probably in the low 30s and there's a little wind kicking up. So it was, it was pretty brisk out there. So Caleb right away jumped inside this thing and I'm trying to uh, make us dinner. So this, this particular meal this evening was, uh, it was nothing fancy, although it was actually pretty good. I love the peak refuel meal. So I had the coconut curry and Caleb had some sort of pasta. Either way, it's uh, with a jet boil. It's a quick 10 minute meal. Yeah, 15 minutes, and so you, you let the thing kind of, uh, you're supposed to let it sit for 10 minutes. But either way, it's a quick meal to put together. Um, and then we were both pretty much beat up. Now, with it being cold, you guys know me. Over the course of the last handful of years, I have one of, what have I said in many videos, one of my favorite accessories, one of my overlanding accessories has been my planter uh, portable diesel heater. Well, actually, my planter heaters in general. Uh, but... No, I have a two kilowatt that's mounted in my in my turtle back in the nose of that thing. So every time I go out, that thing is one of the first things that is being turned on. <laughs> go up there and set the thermostat, boom, be done with it. Um, and then when I'm doing my tent camping and so forth, I have the uh, the planter four kilowatt uh, diesel heater. Um, and this thing is an absolute champ. And so what's funny about this, the reason why I'm bringing, a, bringing this into the front of the story here, it's cold out. The That's a four kilowatt diesel heater. So this thing is a pretty beefy heater. And some of you, if you know your heaters, you probably know where I'm leading with this already. So on um, the, the Boonie Stopper, you have two windows on each side and the, the doors. And so you have a glass and then you can also lift up the screen. So I was able to put the diesel hose inside of there. Now, one thing I do want to point out. So if you guys, if you haven't noticed, I am pro diesel heater. I absolutely love the heat. I love the dry heat. I love the reliability. Now, it's all about getting the right unit though. I've tested a number of diesel heaters and there's just a few companies that really make a high quality diesel heater. You have Webasco, um, 
you have a company that starts with an E and I can never remember their name. Um, and then you have uh, Planner or AutoTerm, well, they're now AutoTerm, but Planner Distribution up in Canada, when it comes, we're seeing that we're talking about this portable diesel heater, they're still manufacturing those portable diesel heaters up there. And so I like this brand. I've been using them for two years. Not a single issue. They're extremely reliable. In this particular case, this was way overkill. Um, this is a four kilowatt and it's the only portable one that I, I have there. And so anyway, it's cold out. Caleb is inside, inside this thing. And so I turn the heater on the lowest setting. Now, one thing I do want to point out, if you do decide to get a, a portable diesel heater, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. You want to make sure you have a rock solid electrical connection. So if it's, I've had, I've had people ask, well, can you use alligator, alligator clips? know why I can't talk right now. Alligator clips. No, I would not recommend that because somebody can uh, accidentally walk by and trip it and pull one of the wires off. There's a few things that are very important when it comes to diesel heaters, the type of fuel that you're putting into it, and also the electrical connection itself. So that said, you want to have it plugged into a source that is just bulletproof, that it's going to be very difficult for somebody to unplug that. And then, of course, like with these planters uh, heaters, you can have your choice of running either with diesel uh, or with kerosene. And usually what I'll do is I'll kind of mix it with a little kerosene, especially if I'm going into cold, because uh, diesel can have it, if it's super cold, can have a tendency of gelling up. You put the kerosene in there and that's going to really work well. And so, and the last thing I want to point out is if you have a portable heater, you want to keep in mind that thing's pushing out a lot of fumes or some fumes there. And I don't want to use a lot, but anyways, it's pushing out some fumes. So you want to move the heater away from wherever your doors are into your, your tent or in this case trailer, because you don't want to be huffing that stuff in uh, all night. And so uh, in this particular case, i placed it right behind my vehicle. I have that about a six foot hose that comes into the trailer itself. Anyways, I set the, the thermostat to the lowest possible setting. So this is testament to the thermal properties of this trailer and also <laughs> these darn heaters. And so I was wondering whether or not this was going to be overkill or not, but I figured, okay, I'll just put on the lowest setting and that would be great. 12 o'clock. I'm in there. I'm like, man, this is really stinking warm in there. It was uh, at that point about 78 degrees inside this this uh, this small little space with my son and I. And uh, by 3 a.m., not a joke, it was 86 degrees in there. I'm like, nope, I gotta I gotta pull the plug on this one again. I had the heater at the lowest possible setting, and this is also goes back to having the right tools for the job. Four, if you're not familiar with uh, diesel heaters, so when you go to planter dis distribution and you want to uh, pick up one of these portable heaters, you'll have two choices. You can go with a two kilowatt or you can go with a four kilowatt. Now, if I could go back in time, I would likely, no, actually, I have the two kilowatt that I use in the trailer. That's the two kilowatts perfect for a space like a teardrop uh, or like a rooftop tent or something uh, like but the four kilowatt I think is fantastic. As many of you know, I head out with some uh, ground tents, and that four kilowatt is an absolute rock star. It's almost perfect for these for these tents. Like a lot of the the Russian Bear tents that I use, or the Overlandish tents, that four kilowatt heater is an absolute champ there. But that four kilowatt is is way overkill for this for the smaller teardrop. So even at the lowest setting, uh, it was, yeah, it was a bit much there. Um, and so, and actually I just thought, just realized what I could have done, which I didn't, I didn't think of. And it's just as I'm telling you the story here, there's that fan on the top of the, the, the boonie docker that you can turn on. And I bet you if I cracked one of the windows just a little bit more um, and turn that fan on the lowest setting, that's going to pull in more of that cool air and that would probably offset the temperature inside that thing which would have meant the space would well, basically what I did is I at 3 a.m. in the morning at 86 degrees I'm like nope we had a minus 25 uh, degree sleeping bag inside there and I decided okay shut the heater off <laughs> stuck the hose outside and we would just huddle up inside the uh, the sleeping bag well here's the funny story 
Caleb's a little sleeping, or he's a little blanket hog. By morning, my back end is just, it's freezing. And reason by, reason being is Caleb grabbed all the blanket and brought it over to him. So he's all bundled up in this thing, and I'm like out of the blanket at 6 a.m. in the morning, which worked out good because that ended up waking me up, and I didn't miss. I was able to catch an absolutely a stunning uh, sunrise, and which is fantastic. Nothing beats a good coffee in hand, a beautiful sunrise. And what's funny is because we got there after dark, or after it was dark already, so seeing light for the first time, everything around you was actually pretty darn cool. But at any rate, so the one thing I will point out, though, I was talking a moment ago about the uh, the mattress in this thing. The mattress in this thing is pretty. You guys know me. I'm a tough critic. Uh, I always have my uh, X-Speed Mega Mat uh, mattress, almost religious with it. I, I absolutely, you, there's only been one tent. Hands down, that was that is the most comfortable mattress I've ever, ever laid down in, in a uh, rooftop tent. Now, the one in the Boonie Stomper here, this thing I'm gonna say is close to a number two. This The mattress that they, these guys put in there is pretty stinking comfortable. We didn't use, um, actually would have been able to put my Mega Mat in there. Uh, but um, yeah, anyways, super comfortable. Speaking of all this, this is a great opportunity to uh, dive into some of the pros and cons of the Boonie Stomper. Now I'm gonna start off with, uh, we'll start off with the pros. Uh, and we're gonna start off with the 900 pound Gorilla. Actually, it's ironic because we're talking about the weight here. This thing is lightweight and it doesn't even weigh as much as a 900 pound Gorilla. At 600 pounds or 670 pounds, this trailer can be towed virtually by pretty much anything. Um, that is not exaggeration. Uh, I've seen they show videos on their website of one of these things, one of these things being towed by a side by side. Um, and so at this weight right here, I mean, geez, a Volkswagen Bug could easily tow the Mini Cooper. Can you get him? Can you put a tow hitch on Mini Cooper? Anyways, I don't know if there's a tow capacity to a, to Mini Cooper. Whatever it is, I'm making I'm having a little fun. Make sure you check your towing capacity. But I'm pretty sure at 600 pounds, virtually anything is going to be able to tow this thing. So that by far is going to be hands down the big pro with this thing. Uh, then they dive into affordability at just above $10,000 for one of these things at the time of this video here. Man, you get a lot of value for your dollar. Um, I think this is perfect for two people. For a family, that's gonna be a little tight in there. So if it's an adult and a kid, fantastic. Two adults, fantastic. Now, the next thing I'm gonna point out here, as I brought up earlier, is you don't, as cliche as it sounds, you don't know that this thing is behind you. It is that, at least with a vehicle like mine, for example. I, again, I have a Gladiator. I think any decent sized truck, uh, you're gonna not really notice this thing behind it, which is great from a fuel economy standpoint and getting out there. Um, and of course, what we were talking about a moment ago, this mattress in this thing is pretty stinking comfortable. That hands down is another big plus uh, that I'm going to point out about this thing. And airflow, and that's another item on the pro side of this here that I think is a big perk with this thing. Again, that fan that they have up on the top there is extremely powerful. You crank open those, those windows on the side or I don't know why I made it look like that, but you slide them up and then you have the screen or you can actually open it full up and you have with that fan there, it just opens up, you know, just a ton of airflow in this thing. And the last thing I'm gonna point out to you uh, with regards to Pro is this trailer is very straightforward. There's, it's very easy to operate. So if you're relatively new, uh, and I think this addresses the question, who who is this for or addresses part of who this audience is real or who this trailer is made for, at least in my opinion. I think those that are looking for something that is simple and easy to enjoy uh, without breaking the bank, this thing really checks out the boxes. Uh, if you don't have towing experience, a big trailer can be a daunting, it can create anxiety. This small trailer like this, uh, this, is, this trailer is a breeze to tow around. So if you don't have experience, uh, with from a towing standpoint, this is a great trailer to learn that on. So I'm going to actually put that down as a 
as a pro for this. And as we close off this, this video here, actually I'll address it right now. So I'll finish off with who I think this is for. So if you have a small space, because one of the, the responsibilities that you have with having a trailer is, well, where the hell are you gonna store it? So you either have to have a high garage or a garage space or a side place or a place around where your house, where you're not gonna piss off your neighbors because you have a trailer sitting outside. With this thing being as small as it is, man, you can stuff this thing pretty much anywhere where you want. It's, so people that have limited amount of space, this thing is an absolute rock star. Now, if you're a person that uh, has a side-by-side -side and you want to be able to explore with a side-by-side, -side, man, this thing is going to shine. Um, if it's just yourself and you want something economic, uh, you want something easy to tow, uh, something that if from a size standpoint is going to be easy to navigate through tight corners and really uh, rough terrain and so forth, this trailer is really going to do a great job for you. Again, that small size, this is a good example, and it's funny, back in the day, uh, many of you know, I'm uh, ex-military, and I remember my first drill sergeant, uh, and this dude is like this tall, and he would always tell people, don't let his size fool you, small axes chop big trees. Sergeant Adams, I would love to take credit for that, but that came from him. So I think the boonie docker fits that needs, uh, that that phrase as well. Small axes indeed do chop big trees and this trailer does it in style. Now, many of you are going to ask me, well, Alex, uh, what, are, what are some cons with it? You must have a con. And actually I do. The mattress inside of it. So the mattress is a pro and it's a con for me. And it's a, you'll see why. So the mattress hands down is one of the more comfortable mattresses that I've slept on in a in a tent or trailer, this or that. Uh, hands down, no question about that. Where I do, I'm putting this as a con here, is I started noticing the size of the mattress. I'm like, hmm, this is a custom size mattress. So you can't get a queen or a full or a double or a twin. It's not gonna fit. You have to kind of customize that sheet in order to get that thing to go around there. And that's pretty much, friends, that's the only con I have with this thing. Uh, I was going to put a, 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 um, a nose box, but you can get a nose box for this thing. So I'm not going to uh, categorize that as a, as a con. Um, they really did a good job for this. Again, for the money that these things cost, these trailers are well equipped or what they don't have, you can actually pick up the accessories through some of the options that they have available. So as you can see, the Boonie Stopper comes well equipped uh, from the start, but you can really make it your own with all the options that we spoke about a moment ago. But you definitely want to stay tuned because about a month and a half from now, when spring really kicks off, uh, we're going to head back down there. There's some spots down in Ensbrega. Uh, we're going to probably spend a little bit more time down there. I'm going to sign up one of these uh, these trailers again and just enjoy it. It's actually fun driving down to location, not towing a trailer, and just being able to sign it out uh, and run around uh, Ensbrega and the salt and seas down there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So you'll want to stay tuned with that. But um, anyway, it's that time of the video where friends on uh, normally I would be talking about our current giveaway, but that has ended. I actually think tomorrow or Thursday, I'll be in the next uh, four-wheel drive talk episode. We're going to talk about uh, our new giveaway. Actually, we're going to announce the, the past winners from last month, and we'll, we'll talk about our new giveaway. That said, friends, well, it's that time of the video where I'm going to be shutting off all these cameras. This was a fun video put together. Again, it, these videos are put together to help you make more informed decisions. I get out there, play around with these trailers, so therefore you can see firsthand or get an idea from my standpoint, what we like, dislike, you may agree, hey, you may not, but at the end of the day, you'll have a better understanding as far as if this trailer is something that fits your needs or where your overlanding uh, compass is pointed at. So if you did find some value, we sure appreciate you. Do all that YouTube stuff. So consider hitting that like button, subscribe, and so therefore you don't miss a single video just like the one that you watch. Be certain to hit all notifications, and friends, we would appreciate it. But that said, it's time to shut these cameras off, so I'm gonna be getting out of here, so you get out there and find your adventure.